Bueno, pues muy buenas tardes. Eh, muchísimas gracias, como siempre, por acompañarnos. Sabemos que es una tarde difícil. Eh, está la Agenda eh, Cultural de Madrid en, en plena ebullición. Eh, vamos arrancando y me imagino que irá llegando más, eh, más gente según vaya avanzando la charla. Pero a todos los que estáis aquí, muchísimas gracias por por acompañarnos. Eh, quisiera agradecer a Jennifer Steinkamp, antes de pasarle la palabra, eh, el haberse embarcado en esta colaboración con Fundación Telefónica, el infatigable trabajo de estos últimos días y, por supuesto, su presencia eh, hoy aquí. A ella le debemos el lujo de poder disfrutar hasta el mes de abril eh, de un bellísimo conjunto de cinco instalaciones y también eh, le debemos la oportunidad de presentar por primera vez eh, la disposición original de nuestra sala, prácticamente diáfana, eh, con sus 24 ventanas eh, descubiertas. Así que la ocasión eh, es inmejorable. Eh, así que, como es habitual en el trabajo eh, de Jennifer, ha buscado desmaterializar eh, la arquitectura de la galería, tal y como la conocemos, para ofrecernos una experiencia nueva del espacio. En un momento en que el uso de la tecnología suele relacionarse con cierto grado de desconexión del mundo real, trabajos como el de Jennifer Steinkamp nos recuerdan que las nuevas herramientas digitales, eh, por supuesto dotadas de alma y de el talento creativo eh, suficiente, eh, contienen una capacidad asombrosa para proporcionarnos experiencias intelectuales y sensoriales de gran calado. Jennifer Steinkamp es pionera en el uso de la animación digital, con la que empezó a trabajar hacia la década de los 80, fascinada por la posibilidad de crear imágenes que nunca antes nadie hubiese visto. Su obra se encuentra, por supuesto, en un sinfín de, de colecciones, ha expuesto en, en museos de todo el mundo, eh, en espacios tan emblemáticos como Times Square. Ella es profesora de UCLA, eh, ha creado los audiovisuales para dos giras eh, mundiales del Grupo U2, pero más allá de su brillante y extensísima eh, currículum, seguramente una de las contribuciones más destacables de Steinkamp haya sido el consolidar eh, su disciplina, la animación digital, en una disciplina de pleno derecho dentro del, del mundo del arte contemporáneo. Eh, bajo el título Naturaleza Digital, el título de la exposición, la artista nos propone una, exper una experiencia basada en la interacción de aquello que supone ponemos más físico, más, más real, eh, la naturaleza, con lo virtual. Eh, una experiencia en la que la naturaleza ya no es natural, sino artificial, ya no se mueve mecida por el viento, sino por la programación, y sin embargo sigue ejerciendo un poder hipnótico sobre el observador, sobre nosotros. Eh, yo no quisiera desvelar mucho más sobre lo que vais a ver eh, en un rato. A continuación, Jennifer eh, nos dará algunas breves claves sobre su trabajo. Será a lo largo de una media hora aproximadamente, tras la cual, podre, tras la cual podremos ver la exposición, que está en la tercera planta de este edificio. Y hacia las 8 y cuarto, 8 y 20, después de ver la, la exposición, ofreceremos un pequeño cóctel en este mismo espacio, en la segunda planta. Así que, sin más, eh, doy paso a Jennifer. Muchísimas gracias de nuevo por tu espléndido trabajo y cuando quieras tienes la palabra. Gracias. Gracias. I didn't understand a word, but I'm sure. <laughs> I'll trust you. Oh, so um, this is an AR, artificial reality piece that I created that responds to my facial expressions. So like, if I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> really? Uh, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. It's, I made this for a conference at the New Museum uh, called Seven on Seven for Rhizome. Uh, it was in New York about a year and a half ago. So it's capturing uh, my facial expressions, like sad. And then it's sort of like a puppet, an emotional puppet. It's also, I, I think of it as a mirror. It's All right, you. Okay. 
I'm gonna goodbye. I was um, really inspired by Picasso's Girl in a Mirror uh, when I was thinking about this piece. All right, bye. See ya. Okay, now I'll show you. Oh, I'll show you my email. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, this is my website. Mm -hmm. ah. Uh oh, I'm not speaking. Okay, this is the internet um, doing its thing, of course. Uh, let's see. Unmute, okay. Play. I might have to show you pictures. Yeah, <laughs> this is fun. Well, this is the this was the first piece I created uh, as an installation. It was at a museum. Here, I'll I'll go to the pictures. It was working earlier. Okay, it was at a, a museum, the Santa Monica Museum in Los Angeles, and a house in Pasadena and I projected in the windows. And the house looked like it dropped in from outer space. It was, it was what, 1989, it was very peculiar. Um, it sort of started everything. Let's see, I'll go to this one. And then in 2002, 9-11 um, happened. Oh, that's a, that's a good idea. <laughs> Oh, the internet is... No, no, no. Okay, I will control that. There we go. <laughs> That's funny. It's not on this page. It's on one of these other pages. Uh, at any rate, 9-11 uh, happened. Uh, and um, at the time, you couldn't say anything against going into war with Afghanistan. And I didn't understand that. And uh, so in protest, uh, I made this piece in... Uh, with flowers. It's the first time I used flowers. And um, I named it Jimmy Carter because he's probably our only president who was more of a pacifist. Let's see if this will play. There we go. Oh, not too good. All right. Um, before this, my work was more abstract, and so I thought of the flowers as stripes. And let's see if I can I have control. Okay. Go to another one. Um, then in 2003, I was invited to make an installation for the uh, Yerbaton cistern. It um, held water. The cistern was created for this palace. So now it's a tourist attraction, and it's actually constructed out of found Greek and Roman parts from buildings. So 1,500 years ago or so, uh, they made this cistern out of found parts, and now it's a tourist attraction. Has anybody been there? I imagine it's not that far away for you. <laughs> um, at, so at one end, uh, there's these Medusa heads, and one is turned upside down, and the other is on her side. Uh, yeah. And um, I decided to be, in, I was, became inspired by the story of Medusa, and uh, I decided to make this enchanted environment for, uh, for her. And so I made these trees where the branches move like the snakes in her hair. And let's see. And then a little later, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art in San Diego invited me to make an installation. And this piece is actually here, or part of it's here. One, probably this one, this part. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I live in Los Angeles, and that's about two hours away from San Diego. So when you drive between Los Angeles and San Diego, there's a nuclear power plant right in the middle. Uh, Supposedly, that's a safe place to put it. I don't know. And uh, so I, that sort of inspired me to research nuclear power and, uh, 
and nuclear weapons. And as I researched this subject, I came across uh, Marie Curie, and I read um, her biographies. And she's an amazing scientist. And so that inspired me to make this piece, taking some, my negative fear and turning that around into a dedication to Marie Curie. And th uh, she's the first woman uh, to win the Nobel Prize twice. And then her daughter, became, one of her daughters, became the second woman to win. And she discovered two elements. There's not that many elements, so it's kind of incredible. She discovered radium and palladium. And um, so her daughter wrote this, one of her, not the Nobel Prize daughter, but her other daughter wrote uh, the biography. And throughout the book, she mentions flowers like so many flowers, like uh, when Marie was a student at the Sorbonne, she would buy cut flowers, even though she didn't have money, or she, she had all these institutes with gardens. So, uh, so I decided to take the flowers mentioned in the book and animate them. And you'll see that upstairs, so I won't try to play that. And then I do want to play this one. Thank you. Uh, this piece was created for Soledad Lorenzo's gallery here in 2012. As, um, it's, the, the title comes from um, a signal that came from outer space, that, not from our planet. And it's the only radio signal, I believe, maybe there's been more since, uh, that was actually received from, from somewhere else. So the signal was 6EQUJ5. And I, just, I was watching um, a documentary uh, by Stephen Hawking, and the scientist who's in the wheelchair. And uh, he talks about cosmology or the origins of life on our, plan on our planet. And there's a theory called panspermia, where um, a, a meteor breaks through uh, the atmosphere, melts, and the microbes form life on a planet. And so it's very random, and I became inspired by that and decided to make asteroids that have graffiti on them. So as if they were created, actually created by somebody intentionally placed, you know, seeded maybe on our planet. So it's kind of my explanation. <laughs> Could be right. Okay, this this piece is in the show. It's called Bouquet. It's a bouquet of flowers. A flower. It's a bouquet, not a bouquet of trees. It was made for the um, U.S. embassy in Guangzhou, China. Come on, internet. You can do it. This piece is called Botanic, and it played on 63 screens in Times Square. Let me just show you, kind of get an idea. And let's see, this. Show you a couple pictures. So, Cornelia Grassi showed this. Oh no, which fair? Um, at in London at Freeze, and I, a photographer took this picture, and I saw it. It was so wonderful. These uh, women wearing flower dresses in front of my piece. <laughs> okay, uh, this was a billboard to maybe uh, impeach some peaches. <laughs> so it didn't work. I'm sorry. I tried. I guess I have to try again, right? Okay, yeah. It was in downtown Los Angeles. I'm gonna pause that one. Uh, this is in the exhibition upstairs. So it was, I'm gonna go to the, more So it was created for the USC Department of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine. So it was for their lobby. And so I researched stem cells and um, it, it's an amazing science, and it's going to change 
everything. And um, it used to be very controversial, and now with the latest discoveries, stem, um, skin stem cells can be converted into, it's called pluripotent um, stem cells, which can be used to generate any organ. So it's really significant. Um, so it's nice to be invited by scientists to make an artwork for their lobby. And uh, I decided to make, I, I discovered that uh, fruit are actually uh, the ovaries of uh, plants. And so I thought it'd be fun to make a, a piece about, called ovaries for a stem cell research group. Okay, and then this is my latest piece. It's called Winter Fountains. You know what, I'm gonna show you the photos first. Which could be deadly. So it's four large domes, uh, maybe the height of the ceiling. And uh, almost wider, like this round area, that big, more or less. So there's four of them in the Benjamin Franklin Parkway in Philadelphia, and they're on right now. And so um, during the winter, fountains are shut off, so that inspired me to make a piece that replaces the fountains for winter at night. And let's see. Uh, this was, here. I guess here's a map to kind of show you. It's pretty large. It's a huge park. It's, um, I believe it's a half a mile from here to here, so. Use internet, be nice. <laughs> Some people let their children out at night. <laughs> I didn't know that that happened anymore, but. Um, so this, this was, the city uh, decided to celebrate the 100th anniversary of this park, and it's named Benjamin Franklin Parkway, so of course it's a scientist, so I researched Benjamin Franklin, and um, he's incredible, of course. Um, one of his discoveries uh, was that um, static electricity and lightning are the same thing, so in the, in the Enlightenment period, people had no clue, they just thought the gods were striking them with lightning or whatever, and maybe they do, maybe that's still true, <laughs> I don't know. At any rate, um, so this kind of represents what happens in clouds. Tiny particles bash into each other and form static electricity, which becomes lightning. And then of course there's flowers, but maybe not. I am kidding, really. A little more, did I, this one's different. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Don't be shy, because I'm shy. <laughs> yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I'm invited to make a commission, I will find out about the space or about the place. And um, so for this exhibition, uh, I got the measurements and I made a 3D model and figured out how projectors can fit and then said, so does that fit into the budget to have blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I saw pictures of the space with its beautiful windows and uh, that inspired me to take down the walls and maybe make a central wall. You, maybe you haven't seen it yet, but to make a central wall. 
kind of like this. And um, in, in order to, because I didn't visit the space, I actually made a, a VR, a virtual reality, so I could walk around and look at it with a headset and kind of help, that helped me design. I've never done that before for a space, but it helped me understand, so I didn't have to fly here too many times, although it would have been nice. Actually, I've been to Madrid quite a bit, and it, this is a really beautiful city. But, um, so that's kind of how it works. Um, every, every piece is a little bit different. So there's, uh, in this case, uh, I did not make a commission. We exhibited uh, past work uh, based on a theme. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. 